Oh wait, we did a rebrand. So I need you to remove this lamp and the pictures from the back. Recently I had a client reopen a project after three, four years. Now they reopened the project because they were doing a rebranding. I had to work some magic. They had different requests and obviously you don't have to meet every request if it's super crazy, but the rebranding consisted of new logos, new color schemes, all that. In some of the projects that I did, I couldn't find the old project files, which is just bad organization on my end. So, you know, I can change the titles up, make them more blocky titles to cover the old titles so we can change the font, the color schemes. But one of the requests was to remove a logo from the wall behind a subject. My idea was like, if it was this right here and my head didn't come over at all, not that hard. You really just have to remove it from one frame, but the whole logo was behind. It's what you see on screen right here. And so after not as much work as you would think, and just some little magic that I had to work in my editing software, I learned how to remove things from behind a subject like this. Let me teach you how to do this, and I promise you it's really not that hard. It's, it's just editing, and it's kind of using these weird little workarounds. There's times that it's gonna be easier, there's times that it's gonna be harder. The number one thing for this entire technique is that it's a locked off shot. You're gonna wanna make sure that your camera was on a tripod, or else this technique is not going to work unless you wanna go frame by frame to make it happen, which by all means, go ahead. But for me, I'm not gonna do that. The example that we're working with right here is what you see in the top left corner. This is the shot that they asked us to remove the background from. Initially, if it was a few years ago, I would have said absolutely not, can't do that. Maybe I'd blur it out if they wanted to, but it's just very, very tedious to be able to do it but I came up with a better idea. We're gonna go ahead, since it's already an exported video, I mentioned I didn't have the project file for some reason, couldn't find it. Right click, and we are gonna go to new sequence from clip. That meaning that if it's 1080, it's gonna be in 1080. If it's 4K, it's gonna be 4K. However we export it, that's how it's gonna be. Now, these guidelines on here, I had those from a previous project. We'll just go view, and then we will uncheck view guides so we don't have those blue lines going across anymore. Let's just find one of the ones that we want to edit. In order for us to get the exact part of this clip, you'll right click, you're gonna go to scene edit detection, have that first one checked, click analyze, and now it's gonna make a cut where every cut happened throughout this video since we're just importing a video from already being exported. This is great if you're ripping videos off of YouTube and you're trying to get specific spots of that video for whatever you're editing. This is a great tool for that. And right here you see that this entire chunk is going to be where we're gonna have to remove that background. First thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna click on this camera right here. If the camera's not there, click the plus. You can find it right there, drag it on down. I'm gonna click the camera, I'm gonna name it frame to remove. Select wherever you want it to live. And now you have a JPEG file that is a high resolution frame from this video. Open up Photoshop beta. Once you open that up, you aren't actually gonna go up to new file or anything you are going to drag that JPEG right on top of the Photoshop beta logo, and what it will do is it will open it up in Photoshop. This is where the generative fill comes in, and if you haven't used it yet, it's super, super simple. Only weird thing that you'll need is to be connected to Wi-Fi. You don't usually need to be connected to Wi-Fi to use Photoshop or Premiere, but in this case, since it's sourcing from the internet, you do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna get the lasso tool, which is up here, keyboard shortcut is L, if that's easier for you. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And I am going to go ahead and select all of the stuff that we want to remove. Just a rough selection, doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually better if it's not perfect. Just make sure that everything is selected. Then we're gonna click on generative fill and we're just gonna say remove. And the next thing you know, you're gonna have a clean slate. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that it put this weird little brown dot in the middle. Um, just gonna circle that with the lasso tool. We're just gonna say remove and it should do the trick. Shouldn't do anything too, too crazy. And what this will do is give us a clean background for us to put that subject 
on. But the question now lies in how the heck are you going to select the subject? Let's go ahead, before we think about that, go to File, Export, Export As, a JPEG in the highest resolution, Export, select where you want it to be exported, Frame, Blank, Slate. So now we have that still export, we're gonna import that into Premiere. You see this right here, you'll drag it on over, and now, it is the same background, but we're not gonna go in Premiere and mask him out independently. What we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on our timeline, click plus on your keyboard, click I for an in point, we're gonna click O for an out point. One of the weird things is click O the frame before it's over. If you do it here, you'll get one frame from the next clip. So click O one frame before the ending and you'll see the out point goes right there. And then what we're gonna do is Command M to export. I like to go in a higher resolution, so I'll go YouTube 2160 4K Ultra, and then select where you want it to export. I'll name it 4 Roto. That's giving you a little teaser of what we're gonna do. Export that, should just take a second, it's exporting an already exported video, which will make your life really easy. Go into After Effects, new project, and let's import for Roto. There we go, we have that clip of him talking now. Drag that down to the bottom, and if you haven't used After Effects before, I promise this is not that hard. It's gotten a lot easier over the years. After Effects is all about knowing where the tools are, and I guarantee you I will show you where the tools are that we're going to use, so you don't have to be worried one bit. Once you have it down here, you have your clip, you're going to double click on it. And then it opens up the layer tab right here. So if you go back, this is your composition, this is your layer. This is where we'll be working for this specific clip. Go up to this person next to the brush, you're gonna click on that. It's called the Roto Brush Tool. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to click and drag along the outside of our subject. Just following along, however it is there. And now you see this purple outline around him. Click around so you fill out the rest of it. And in the shirt here, got a little bit confused. You can zoom in if you would like, just clicking Command Plus. So I'm gonna go fix up the ear. It's pretty good. Command Z that. We'll keep it like that. We'll go around the edge of his head. Now if you want to deselect some, you want to click Option and same thing with that brush. It'll do the great job like it did there. And right like that, there we are. There's a few ways you can go about this now. You can go frame by frame and you can see how the selection is made. All you'll do for that is you will just click over, you can click down, and you see how it is selecting him over the course of the clip. But let me let you in on a little secret. I'm not gonna go through frame by frame for every single clip. I don't like to do that. If it's really important to me, yeah, sure, I'll go ahead and do it. But I think that with rotoscoping 3.0, which is the version that we're using right now, you're totally good with just trusting it. It's not gonna be perfect. We gotta adjust some settings before you don't have to adjust every single frame. It really depends how important the clip is. But the settings that we're gonna to wanna to change are we are going to wanna go up to this effect controls panel. If you don't see it, it's because your clip might not be selected. Click on that right there and you'll see in the effect controls. We're gonna make sure that 3.0 is selected. This is the third evolution of the rotoscoping tool. Obviously it's better than one and two. We're gonna go down to the bottom, check use motion blur. That's gonna track the motion blur whenever he talks, moves his hand, especially if this was filmed in 24 frames per second. And that's all we're gonna need to do here. Go over, click freeze. Whenever you click freeze, what it's doing is it is rendering out every single frame, selecting your subject, so then you will be able to export just the slate of the person talking. That's what we were trying to do here. And once we stack it, I don't wanna to talk too early. Well, you gotta wait for this thing to load, but you'll see this, it's a lot easier than you think. Okay, 17 more frames. So now it says it's frozen. Nothing has really changed, as you can see. You're gonna go back to that composition tab that we talked about before. Once you go over here, you're gonna notice a big difference. 
everything in the background is going to be black. That is saying that the only thing that is selected is the subject. Now we got to export. We're going to go up to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. I like exporting from the Media Encoder instead of After Effects. I've had some problems exporting from After Effects and honestly it's a little bit confusing so I just use what I'm used to. Once it is in Media Encoder, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Format and then down to QuickTime and the preset is going to be Apple ProRes 444 4 with Alpha. Click on that. The alpha is the main thing that you're going to want to have. That means that it's going to export it without anything on the background because you don't want it to just be on a black background. Then you'll have to screen it and you'll lose some data in the subject. We want it to be on that alpha. Rename it whatever you want. I'm going to say for roto done. Put it where you want it. Save. Okay. Make sure that the renderer is the metal renderer. Click the play button. Be patient for it to load. The hardest part about this is actually just waiting for your computer to load. You don't have to do all that much. It's just a waiting game of being patient for everything to load through rotoscope. It really comes down to the performance of your computer. We are going to import the for roto done. Back to the sequence that has that talking head video in it. And here is where the magic happens. Drag that blank frame above the first layer. Now, drag that alpha layer, just the video, over top, click F for the frame, and boom. Look at that. It's done. That right there, you see maybe some weird fringing around the edge, but that logo is removed and I personally would never bat an eye at that. Overall, thank you for watching. Hope this helped you out. I hope these editing techniques can be used for you. Use them in different scenarios. Let me know how you use these exact same techniques in different scenes. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.